Hello, my name is Dr. Brian Reed, and I'm a naturopathic doctor. And this is a video about the comparison of comprehensive mitochondrial support with what I would refer to as partial mitochondrial support. Um, so this is something that I talk about um, a lot with my patients. Um, mitochondrial support is a very pivotal part of a lot of their treatment protocols, um, bearing in mind that a lot of the patients that I work with are dealing with some type of a um, chronic health issues, uh, whether it's persistent Borreliosis, co-infections, mold illness, uh, could be issues related to heavy metals, uh, chronic SIBO or other types of dysbiosis, neurological disorders, and then also patients who are dealing with a cancer diagnosis or a history of a cancer diagnosis. And the amazing thing about mitochondria from a clinical perspective is that they are um, a, a sort of an underlying um, a feature, if you will, of uh, dysfunction with mitochondria is an underlying feature of every single one of those um, areas, which is why I'm so excited about it because it's a, a you know foundational part of my practice. Um, so. <clears throat> In terms of contrasting comprehensive with partial mitochondrial support, uh, and this is something that I touched on in my recent interview with the Better Health guy. Um, I'll put a link to that um, in the in the uh, description of the video. Um, but uh, so for uh, more insight into that, uh, please check that out if you're so inclined. Um, but <clears throat> what I referred to in that interview, um, and what I'll also be talking about in um, a lot of detail um, for clinicians who are able to attend at the upcoming uh, Forum for Integrative Medicine conference in March um, is sort of the difference between comprehensive versus partial mitochondrial support. So diving into that a little bit more as I talk about it, but haven't really gone into much detail on, on any of these uh, social media videos. Um, so I actually have my slides up uh, from my upcoming uh, presentation, um, and I unfortunately can't get into any specific dosing on here just for liability reasons. I can't prescribe any, you know, give any types of uh, naturopathic medical advice or anything like that, unfortunately, unless someone's, uh, you know, directly my patient. Um, but as I have mentioned, for any clinicians listening, if you want my, uh, you know, we, my if you want my protocol uh, in terms of the specific dosing, you can just email my front desk. Um, my our emails on on my website. Just just look me up, um, and uh, and we'll, you know happily send you that information. So um, <clears throat> to to give a sense of comprehensive versus partial mitochondrial support. So um, a comprehensive list um, would include, as I'm reading here off to the side, so a robust dose of uh, benfetiamine, uh, which is the active form of vitamin B1, uh, getting in some riboflavin as well, um, preferably with at least a little bit of riboflavin 5-phosphate in there, um, which is vitamin B2, um, some niacinamide, um, and ideally complementing that with some nicotinamide riboside, riboside or possibly NMN or maybe NAD or NADH, so maybe some, as I like to call it, fancy pants, vitamin B3, um, just to try to get some extra bioavailability in there if possible. Um, zinc at a fairly robust dose, not too high because we don't want to stimulate excessive detox, but, um, but but a decent amount of zinc. Um, some fairly high dose um, pantothenic acid, which is vitamin B5. Um, it's important to make sure that there's adequate methylation support um, going on because s methionine is an important cofactor in some of the uh, reactions actions involved in ATP production in the mitochondria. Um, so making sure that there's <clears throat> adequate methylation support. I like to kind of hedge my bets and at least make sure the patients are on a bit of methyl B12 and methyl folate. Um, manganese is important um, as a cofactor for superoxide dismutase. Acetyl L-carnitine is important to make sure that there's adequate support for beta oxidation of fatty acids. Um, R plus alpha lipoic acid is a cofactor in glycolysis and the Krebs cycle for ATP production. Um, it's optional, but supplementing with some s methionine is, is something one could consider if needed, if they really need that extra methylation support. Um, magnesium, at least um, some magnesium, because it's an important cofactor. Um, if there's other symptoms of magnesium deficiency, then I'll usually recommend it at more robust dosages. Um, <clears throat> mixed tocopherols and mixed tocotrienols, which comprise sort of the, the vitamin E um, category of things. Uh, some vitamin C, um, <clears throat> uh, optional, but some glutathione could be useful. Um, vitamin A, at least a, a modest dose of that. Um, taurine in fairly robust dosages. Proline, so these amino acids in fairly robust dosages. Um, some CoQ10, uh, optional, but getting in some PQQ um, is, is something that could be um, complementary here. Um, and what else do we have here? Possibly some extra phosphatidylcholine for cell membrane support, um, and then possibly some 
some D ribose, making sure there's adequate vitamin D, um, and making sure uh, I, I like putting in some uh, all trans resveratrol, um, possibly some quercetin, um, some creatine for extra support, um, and then just making sure that there's um, adequate levels of trace minerals and, and other uh, minerals and vitamins that. Uh, well, I think I mentioned every vitamin there actually, um, but uh, any trace minerals as well. So sometimes using a multi-mineral just to really flesh out that whole um, spectrum of nutrients that are needed. So that's what I would call comprehensive mitochondrial support. And there's extra bells and whistles we can add in like hyperbaric oxygen therapy, ozone therapy, intravenous laser therapy, uh, uh, in, um, IV NAD potentially, different things like that to help give the mitochondria that extra kick. Um, but in terms of sort of a foundational core protocol, that's what I'm referring to when I'm talking about comprehensive mitochondrial support. Now in contrast to that, um, <clears throat> and not to pick on any given product or anything like that, but I just picked out a couple of random products that are um, on the label and you know otherwise advertised as being mitochondrial support formulas which they are but um, as I'll talk about in more detail at the TFIM conference coming up but just to use one uh, product product for example so this particular product um, gives um, so it has acetyl L-carnitine in there, uh, which is wonderful. Um, it's just at approximately 20%, give or take, of the full therapeutic dose that I've found to be clinically useful. Um, there's coenzyme Q10 in there, which is great, um, but it's at approximately, I mean, looking at the ideal dosage, it's at about 25% of an ideal dose, um, and, and with, you know, sort of a more... Uh, midway dose kind of thing, like an overall supportive dose, it's probably at about like half of an optimal um, supportive dose. Um, there's some PQQ in there, which is great, um, but the daily dose that's recommended on the bottle at least is approximately a third of what the full therapeutic dose might be for that. Um, there's alpha lipoic acid in there, which is wonderful, um, but depending on, you know, optimal dosing, it's at approximately one sixth of an optimal dose, um, or, you know, at the very least, it's a third of an optimal dose if we had more sort of midline uh, or midway dosing. And then it's got a combination formula of various things that do have certain polyphenols um, and other um, antioxidant molecules in there, but it's at very, very low dosing, uh, ballpark about maybe 10% of a therapeutic dose. And that's everything that's in there. So it's not that there's anything wrong with that product, um, but if one was to go on that product and say like, oh, I'm supporting my mitochondria, it's like, well, you are giving your mitochondria some extra benefit, you know, some extra support, I should say, with that product or that protocol. Um, but it's, in my opinion, it's certainly not comprehensive. Um, and once upon a time before I became a mitochondrial enthusiast, or some might say a mitochondriac, that's, that's, a, that's a thing apparently, and I think it sounds great. Um, I think it sounds very funny, I should say. Um, <clears throat> I would re recommend products like this for my patients not really knowing any better, um, that, that maybe it wasn't comprehensive support, and if it didn't work in my patients who were suffering from debilitating fatigue for you know months or years or decades, I was like, oh wow, I guess you, know, you just didn't need any mitochondrial support. And said, well, maybe it was that I wasn't supporting your mitochondria super thoroughly. Um, so that, that's kind of the difference that I'm referring to, and, and it makes, in my experience, all the difference in the world to support the mitochondria of patients really comprehensively because um, a partial product like that I haven't seen work a whole lot if at all for patients whereas a comprehensive um, support is something that I've been seeing in my practice to be very very useful for many of my patients who are suffering from complex chronic illness so um, I, I think that making that distinction is really important so I'll certainly talk more about this in the future but for now um, I will leave it there. Thank <laughs> you.